Hi there. A little behind the scenes intrigue I guess you might be curious to know about. Uh, this is how the footage appears uh, after I take it off my tablet, before I touch it or anything. As you'll notice, uh, it's reversed, it's mirrored, so I have to flip it horizontally when I put it through my editing software. Uh, so yes, lest you think this is a CD by a band called Yarf, it's actually by The Fray. So uh, yes, I have to flip it, and I also noticed in my last video that the color looked a little bit washed out. So uh, in when I'm doing my editing, I'm going to uh, maybe see if I can punch up the color to see uh, how it looks with a little bit a uh, little bit richer color, maybe like this. Ooh, that, that's way too much. No, no, let's tone it back uh, quite a bit. Well, no, that has the opposite effect. I don't want this film noir or anything. Let's uh, adjust it again. There. How's that? Enjoy the video. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're having a good holiday weekend. Uh, and those of you up north of us in Canada uh, just had a holiday. Uh, happy Canada Day to you all out there. Uh, so yes, happy uh Happy July 4th, Independence Day, if you guys choose to celebrate it. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Uh, I'm having a pretty good weekend myself. Thought I would crank out a video. And I, I'm getting over, and I'm not sure if it is allergies or if it was actually a cold. I'm pretty sure it's not COVID, although I actually didn't have myself tested. But uh, yeah, my voice was a little bit froggy. It might sound a little bit different um, right now than it usually does. But uh, yeah, one thing, uh, those of you who might ever happen to visit Oregon, uh, who have never have before, one good thing to know before you come here is this is the uh, grass seed capital of the world. Actually, uh, I believe it's Lynn County, which is just north of us, is the grass seed capital of the world. So uh, essentially, by extension, Oregon is the pollen capital of the world. The pollen counts in the spring, late spring and summer are outrageous. They are off the charts. So if you have pollen allergies, uh, time your visit accordingly or take plenty of Claritin before you uh, visit our state. A beautiful state otherwise. It's just, yeah, the, the first couple of years I was here, the allergies completely wrecked me, but uh, I was able to, I guess, uh, my body just naturally moderated, and so I have uh, usually no effects at all, but this spring has been particularly uh, uh, acutely pollen intensive, so I have had uh, a couple little bouts of allergies, uh, even though I do take Claritin regularly. So, but anyway, uh, that uh, personal health issues aside, uh, yes, today, as you saw by the uh, title of the video and the subject line in the thumbnail and whatnot, I am proceeding ahead with Chapter 8 of my whole darn CD collection. Yes, we're just chugging right along here, even though I've got plenty of chapters to go. We're not even halfway through the rock and pop and vocal CDs yet. It's a long ride, but I hope you're, hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, uh, yes, we left off with the first uh, actually, I, I don't have any uh, recent arrivals to show you lately, uh, which is probably a good thing because I had, what, four uh, la uh, in just the last installment to show you. But anyway, so yes, going and jumping right ahead into the CD collection. Uh, the last CD, as you'll recall, in Chapter 7 was Michael Fronty and Spearhead, and I have a couple of other albums by that artist to show you. Uh, this one is called The Sound of Sunshine. Uh, as you can kind of tell by the title and by the uh, cover image, a very upbeat, bouncy um, album by this artist, and he's not my favorite artist of all time, not by a strat, not by a long shot, but he's had a few albums that I've really liked, and uh, my picking up his albums is very, very spotty for me. I've only got a few of them. In fact, the only other album of his that I have right now is called All People, and this one is, it kind of has a message of, uh, you know, unity, brotherhood, uh, striving for brotherhood anyway, of... Uh, the, the whole family of man, uh, and which is a very valid message, especially nowadays. But it's a very good album, as as have been all of the albums that I've had of his so far, just those, which is just those three. Uh, very good stuff. And then we're moving along into The Fray. They are an artist that I, I latched onto right away, and I can still remember when I bought this CD. Oh, actually, it wasn't this particular CD, but this album. Uh, I originally had just the regular edition, but this one is the uh, limited edition, deluxe uh, with a DVD. So, uh, <clears throat> but yes, when I when I first 
picked up the CD. The first time in, I encountered the fray was, I remember I was in a, it was a Sam Goody store in the mall here in Eugene. And uh, they had the song uh, Over My Head, Cable Car, playing. It was, uh, the video of it was playing on the uh, TV audio video system in the store. And I really, really liked that song. And so on impulse, I bought the album and ended up uh, really enjoying it. And it's stayed in my collection all this time. But yes, a very good uh, album by a very good band. Um, let's see, How to Save a Life, the title track, is another really good song. And uh, what was the other one? Heaven Forbid is a very, very good track on there. So if the only one you know is Over My Head Cable Car, and, and I guess in a way they are kind of a one-hit wonder, check them out more, if, especially if you like that song. <coughs> Excuse me. Still got a little bit of that cough. Uh, and I do have a, a couple of other Frey albums, as you saw in the cold open. They're a self-titled album. And a funny story, I bought this at the FYE up in Salem a couple of years ago. They wanted $9.95 for it, and their CDs are still sealed. You can't open them uh, before you buy them. And this was supposed to have a second disc of uh, uh, remixes and, and uh, B-sides and stuff. And the one that I bought at uh, Sam Goody, or uh, FYE, didn't have the second disc. And it's, you know, an hour and a half drive to return it, so screw it. But uh, later on, I eventually picked up another version of it uh, for, for much less, as I recall, which did, in fact, have the second disc in it. So it all worked out in the end. And then I have their third album, Scars and Stories. Pretty good album as well. Uh, I don't I don't like either of these nearly as much as <clears throat> as their uh, debut album, but still a good a good band. And I have not explored them further, but perhaps one day I will. Then we have a CD that you might have seen in uh, a bargain bag last year. Michael Frito uh, introducing Michael Frito is the name of the album. And yes, I had, I had owned this one a long time ago. I I picked up the the non promo edition of it at some point and got tired of it, and so I got rid of it, and it ended up appearing in a mystery CD grab bag many months later, and I decided this this means something, so I decided to go ahead and hang on to it. And uh, I've been enjoying it uh, again. And then we have another bargain bag CD, Frente, with their album Marvin the Album. I love the album title, and I liked it so much that I picked up their sophomore album up at uh, in Portland, I believe, uh, their sophomore album is called Shape. Pick that one up. Good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we have a member of the Eagles, Glenn Fry. Uh, the Eagles was one, one of my sister's favorite bands, and so I've kind of, you know, gotten into their stuff. And of course, being an 80s kid, Glenn Fry appeared regularly on all the soundtracks uh, of the period, you know, Miami Vice, and I'm pretty sure he was on uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, the soundtrack from Beverly Hills Cop. So, yes, uh, great stuff. The Heat is On and Smuggler's Blues, I think those were... Oh, no. The Heat is On was from uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Smuggler's Blues was from Miami Vice. And uh, You Belong to the City was also on Miami Vice. And uh, so, yeah. Good stuff. A, a very good solo artist and a great artist with the Eagles. And then uh, this one, I actually... And this is another one that I owned briefly a long time ago. And I saw it in the racks during Skip's going out of business sale. And so I decided, again, this was kind of an omen to go ahead and pick it up. And uh, I think the one I had originally was the standard edition. And this is actually the deluxe edition with, what is it, four or five? Or maybe just three additional bonus tracks. So, but yes, this is, um, he covers classic popular songs, uh, some uh, Great American Songbook standards. And some stuff from more recently, like uh, Caroline No, which I believe was a Beach Boys song. But he also does Route 66 and For Sentimental Reasons and uh, lots of other stuff. And I think I think the title track, After Hours, is an original song, uh, Glenn Frey original. And uh, The Look of Love, the back rack song. So, uh, yeah. Very, very good stuff. A change of pace from Glenn Frey's uh, regular stuff. But still very, very good. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. You're going to deal with me uh, coughing a little bit throughout this video. Sorry about that. I hesitated doing a video, but as I decided I wanted to, I wanted to get you guys a video this weekend. So uh, please forgive the coughing. Uh, next CD in my collection is 
Friendly Fires uh, with their album Inflorescent. You'll recall this was in, I believe, my top three in 2019. This is just a great party record. It's got a lot of great um, electro pop, dance pop beats on it. Uh, some great, great stuff. So yes, if you're in, in need of an, uh, music to kind of pump up a party, get that one. And then uh, here we have another uh, Bargain Bag CD, Fruitcake, uh, with their album How to Make It. And this was, if I recall, it's been a while since I've listened to it, um, electronic stuff, possibly instrumental. It's been that long that I cannot remember what it is exactly, which means I should re-listen to it at some point. Then we have a, an artist who was a finalist in the Norwegian Idol series, I believe. I might have this. I might have his association. I might be, be mistaken with his association with Idol. That might not be true. But uh, Alejandro Fuentes, yes, he's Norwegian, but obviously he's uh, uh, Latin by uh, by blood. But uh, yes, a good artist, and he is part of a quartet in a pair of live albums that you will see what four chapters later, <laughs> four chapters from now, uh, along with uh, one uh, another couple of my favorite artists. Uh, great set of albums. I'll have to show those to you when the time comes, of course. And then we are on to Fun, the uh, band, uh, Jack Antonoff's previous band, before he uh, founded his essentially one-man act, Bleachers. Uh, very good stuff. Good uh, uh, power pop. Sort of a mix between power pop and indie rock kind of stuff. Good stuff. That album was pretty good, but uh, I am partial to their album, Some Nights, which was, of course, a big hit album for them. Um, the song We Are Young was probably their biggest hit single. Uh, Carry On is great. And uh, yeah, very good stuff. My friend Noah has uh, uh, fixed me firmly into the Jack Antonoff uh, Appreciation Society. Although I actually did have uh, some nights before, before I ever met Noah. So uh, this next one... <laughs> This, this is kind of an interesting one. Um, this is by no means a really a very good recording because he's not a good singer. He is or was an actor, decent actor, not a decent singer. I got this just because of the, uh, uh, the, the morbid fascination for how bad it is. Edward Furlong. Uh, yes, uh, you might, if, if you've seen Terminator, Terminator 2, uh, Judgment Day, he was the kid, he was John Connor in Terminator 2, and he or somebody else, probably somebody else, back in those days it was, you know, producers or handlers that said, oh, let, let's have him make a record album, let's sell albums and, you know, make him a teen idol. Uh, yeah, didn't work this time around. This stuff is so bad. Look up the song, um, oh shoot, which one is it? Uh, Hold On Tight, which is actually the, the title track. Check out that song, uh, but brace yourself for something that really sounds terrible, okay? But yes, that, that will give you an idea of how uh, how good the rest of the album is. But yes, Hold On Tight by Edward Furlong. I dare you to listen all the way through that song. Next up we have, uh, this is kind of a curiosity. I had had, yet again, uh, these guys put out two albums. I'd had them both, got rid of them stupidly, and was able to find one of them, and I'm still kind of got the other one on my on my I'll get it eventually list. G Squad, they are a French boy band. And one of the things that kind of got me interested in them was that they did a couple of songs. Oh, what were they? Um I can't recognize them by the titles, but they they covered at least one song by the Backstreet Boys and I think at least one song by NSYNC, uh, in French, which was very cool. And I can't remember if either or both of these were on this album or not. But uh yeah. Decent stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> then we have a, uh, a jazz, a vocal jazz artist that I, I kind of like. I can't remember how I stumbled upon her, but she, she's pretty good. Melody Gardot is her now is her name. And uh, Worrisome Heart. This is her. Is this her sophomore album? Uh, I can't remember. I have this album, and then I have another album of hers that's in a jazz box set. That's of what is it? Twenty five albums. I think. But yeah, it's something that was on special up at uh, Music Millennium a couple of years ago, and I picked it up and will eventually make my way through it. I actually haven't started listening to those albums yet. 
I've heard a couple of them already, but you know. But anyway, suffice, uh, long story short, I have this C standalone CD and another one of her albums I have in that jazz box set. And then we have Judy Garland. I kind of have to have Judy Garland. Oh, interesting. The, uh, hmm, the, the color on the uh, image took on a brownish hue there for a second. But yes, of course, Judy Garland. That's kind of weird, the color shifts here. Uh, Over the Rainbow, of course, is her big, big hit. But she had a lot of, uh, a lot of great songs. I mean, hey, one of the best classic pop vocalists of all time. There is no argument. And then we have uh, another. This is a, a, one of the teen pop, uh, uh, teen idols in my uh, collection here. This was before my time, uh, before I was old enough to really get into music. But uh, he kind of made a splash during his time, and he was also an actor. But uh, unlike Edward Furlong, this guy was actually a pretty decent singer. Uh, Leif Garrett is his name. And uh, some of you might be aware of him. And I actually remember I got this CD. You know, I honestly can't remember where, where it was. But I, I remember my sister was with us. And we stopped at some little store that had a little CD collection, or a selection of CDs. And this was one of, one of them, and I bought it there. I can't remember what kind of a, a store it was, <clears throat> or what, but uh, I just remember that my sister was with us, the whole family was together, and uh, yeah. I know that's not much of a story. It's a reminiscence with a whole lot of uh, uh, holes in it that I can't remember, but uh, there you go. That's the best I can give you on that story. And then we have a... Uh, this is a solo member of a British boy band. He's, he kind of, uh, when, the, when the band, actually no, it was before the band broke up, he just kind of did a solo side project and unfortunately didn't do any more. Um, Stephen Gately with his album New Beginning. And uh, he was actually one of the first, I believe he was the first member of an active boy band to come out as LGBTQ. So he was kind of a trailblazer in that regard. And unfortunately, that was his only solo album. And he tragically, he passed away from... Well, it was Natural Causes, which, I mean, he was only in his 30s. So I don't know how natural Natural Causes can be if you die in your 30s. But uh, yes, about... Uh, I guess it's been about 10 years ago that he passed away, uh, sadly. And uh, then I have, um, as I've mentioned in a couple of previous chapters, when I have a couple of CD singles, I kind of... Uh, double them up into a standard case, and that's what I did with a couple of Stephen Gately singles, uh, I Believe and Stay. I've got the track listings on there, and of course the discs themselves are like that. So. And here we have an artist that I know is a uh, the runner-up of the original first season of the British version of Idol, which is called Pop Idol. Actually, that was the first one. American Idol was based off that, so... Anyway, his name is Gareth Gates, and this is his his debut album, What My Heart Wants to Say. Great voice on this guy. It's kind of, uh, kind of high as male voices go, uh, but still just a very, very sweet voice. You know, and I, I, like, I like his stuff. Good stuff. And uh, <clears throat> he put out a few, two or three more albums, but I don't have any of those. It's, this is the only one of his that I have. I found it at a Tower Records in the Imports bin, so... Then we have a trio of CDs that uh, are thanks to my sister. They were in her collection. Marvin Gaye. This is his uh, 20th Century Masters, the 60s. And, of course, you've got uh, I Heard It Through the Grapevine, uh, Ain't That Peculiar. I love that song. That's one of my favorite Motown songs, Ain't That, Pecu Ain't that Peculiar. And then uh, How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You. And uh, Pride and Joy, another great one. <clears throat> And then a Marvin Gaye, The Millennium Collection, The 70s. So this is going into his more uh, social consciousness era with, of course, the song What's Going On and Mercy, Mercy Me, The Ecology and Inner City Blues Make Me Want to Holler. So, yes, a, a great, great artist with many facets. And then to top off this trilogy, we have... Uh, actually, this should probably be before the other two because I think chronologically he made these recordings with Tammy Terrell before he went solo. But yes, the 20th Century Millennium Collection with 
uh, his duets with Tammy Terrell. Great stuff. And uh, Ain't No Mountain High Enough is, of course, their big, big hit. And You're All I Need to Get By. Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. So, hey, what can you say about... Uh, actually, I am going to sort this... Rearrange this so it's before the Marvin Gaye solo CDs. Yes. What can you say about Marvin Gaye, one of the classic, classic performers? <clears throat> and then uh, this one, I debated whether or not to put this one in my spoken word and comedy section because it is mostly, actually, I think all, all of his stuff is spoken word. It's not actually singing. But I decided since it has musical background, I decided to put it in the music CDs. You might recall this one from a bargain bag uh, last year. Bobby Gaylor with his album Fuzzatonic Scream. Interesting, uh, interesting kind of stuff. Kind of beat poetry in a way with modern instrumental backing. Curious stuff. With very, very uh, uh, dark sense of humor in a lot of the uh, tracks. And then we have, uh, this is uh, before she transitioned. Uh, so it could might be interesting, might be off-putting. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Make your own judgments. Try not to be too harsh on me if I choose to show this. Uh, but yes, Teddy Geiger, now a uh, very uh, in-demand uh, songwriter and producer. He's been doing that for quite a while. But this was his one and only, I believe, solo album. He did a holiday EP and another EP after this. Uh... I refer to he being their gender at the t at the time of the recordings. That's 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 how I use the pronouns. Forgive me if that offends anyone. But yes, uh, I really enjoyed this stuff. Um, it's it's a little odd because now you know knowing that this wasn't who Teddy was, you know, inside makes it a little bit makes it a little bit weird. But the songs on here are just great. Uh, For you, I will. Uh, Confidence, that's a great song. That was one of the singles off this. And uh, Thinking Underage, which is, in effect, the title track. Uh, Underage Thinking is the name of the album. And uh, Air Dry, that's a good one. Look Where, Look Where We Are Now, that was one of, my, one of my favorite songs off the album. And so, yeah, I'm just... Yeah. Even though uh, Teddy probably does not look fondly on this part of uh, her career... I, I like the CD. I've still I've I've kept it all these years because I still enjoy it. So, good stuff. And then we have a classic rock pop band from the the eighties, uh, the seventies, and the eighties. We have Genesis. This is a two disc hits collection, and this is all that I have of Genesis on CD. I have an LP of theirs. So, uh, but yeah, of course, all the big hits are on here. I mean, you, you name a hit single, and it's on here name any of their singles practically, and it's on there. Then we have, uh, this one I picked up, this was not a bargain bag, no, it was, I picked this up on the dollar wall, I think, uh, Gerardo, with his album Mo Ritmo, uh, his song Rico Suave was parodied by Weird Al Yankovic as Taco Grande, so, uh, that's, that's my connection to Gerardo. Not a bad, not a bad artist, uh, mostly Spanish language rapper, something different. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have a rock band from the 90s, yeah, late 90s, The Getaway People. They had a little bit of a a little bit of a hip hop, just very very slightly hip hop sound to them. A little electronica, electronica more than hip hop. But uh, yeah, just they're just kind of a kind of a funky sort of a sound to them. They they have something kind of unique. Um She Gave Me Love is uh one of the good songs on here. Plastic People. I really like that song as well. But uh, yes, this is their self-titled album. And then oh, I also have their sophomore album, The Turnpike Diaries. And uh, Six Packs was actually used as the theme of a uh, a high school high school drama show that only ran for one season back in uh, back at the uh, the year two thousand was uh, when this album was put out. And then what was what is the other song? Oh, Good Life. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, Malcolm in the Middle, the TV series, The Good Life was used as uh, uh, in an episode of uh, Malcolm in the Middle and appeared on the soundtrack album from that. So, And it's one of my favorite songs by the Getaway People. So good stuff. Now this next one... <clears throat> my water is back there and I need to... 
it's it's out of reach and I need to uh, get a drink here. Hang on. Uh, let, let me get, I'm almost halfway done, so let me get through the halfway mar mark and I will pause the recording and then resume it in a second. So anyway, this next artist is kind of a, he's a not so guilty pleasure, I will admit. Um, very, very, very teen pop and very um, late 90s teen pop. His name is Gil. Uh, his actually his name is actually Gil Ofarim, and uh, his parents were uh, popular music re recording artists in the seventies, Abi and Esther Ofarim. Uh, he is um, he was raised in Germany, and his parents, I believe, are Middle Eastern uh, of of uh, heritage. But uh, hey, good uh, hey, it's ear candy, okay. Nothing really substantial in that, but uh, I like it. It's, it's, as I said, a not-so-guilty pleasure. And that was his first album called Here I Am. And his sophomore album called The Album was a little bit more sophisticated and, uh, you know, a little bit more, a little more rocking. And that's kind of what he eventually went into was a much more of a rock sound. But uh, the song Out of My Bed, Still in My Head, that if that one had been uh, recorded by an American artist, I think it would have been a huge hit. It's just I I love that song. I loved how I love how it's structured. I love the lyrics. It's just everything about that song is just great. Out of my bed, still in my head, by Gill. Uh, that it's it's bound to be on YouTube or possibly even streaming on Spotify or something. Give it a listen. Uh, but the song "Stop" is also one of my favorites on this album. So it's great stuff. And uh, right now is another good one. So uh, yeah, I prefer this album more than Here I Am because Here I Am was very very much pop. And this one is a little bit more rock. Not a whole lot more, but still. And then, uh, because it includes three unreleased tracks and also a uh, disc of his music videos, I had to get his Greatest Hits album. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. What can I say? I, everybody's got their guilty or not-so-guilty music listening pleasures. <coughs> and this one I wanted to... As I said at the beginning of my CD collection, I wanted to show you my CD collection, warts and all. Uh, not that I think there are any warts in here necessarily, but anyway, you get my you get my drift. Now this one, uh, I I keep wanting to think this was a bargain bag, but no, this I got just I got it off of the bar budget wall at um, Epic Seconds. Didn't even hadn't even heard of this guy before. Uh, gave it a shot and I really really enjoyed it. Vance Gilbert, kind of a folk pop artist. Uh, he looks kind of like uh, Darius Rucker, and in a way, you know, not just because of the way he looks, but also kind of reminds me of Darius Rucker. He's got just a little bit of a country sound to him. Uh, more of, It's more a mixture of blues and folk, and he's got a nice wry sense of humor in some of his songs, and I liked it so much that I picked up his sophomore album, Fugitives, as well as his third album, Shaking Off Gravity. So... Yes, a good artist uh, Yeah, that I found. One of those unexpected finds that uh, you know ends up being a favorite in the grand scheme of things. Maybe not a favorite, but I liked him enough to buy two more albums of his. And then uh, this, this CD is actually from a collection that my aunt and uncle gave me a couple of years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is the best of the Gypsy Kings. They are a kind of a, they're, well, they're basically a world music uh, outfit. Uh, mostly Latin, but they also include some, a uh, couple of other different uh, genres of world music, uh, blended, kind of all blended together. It's really good stuff. And they also do a couple of, uh, oh, let's see, at least I thought they did. I'm not seeing it on the uh, track listing, but they've done a couple of uh, classic, you know, cl classic Latin folk songs and stuff, aside from just original material. So, pretty good stuff, and, and it's a very welcome addition from uh, my my aunt and uncle's collection. And this guy, I've talked about him uh, him a few times. G Love, uh, originally G Love and Special Sauce. This is his uh, or their self titled, yeah, self titled album. And I've got a few more uh, sophomore album, uh, Coast to Coast Motel. Yeah, that's the name. Of it. And then. Third album, yeah, it's that easy. Really good one. I think I actually uh, talked about this one <clears throat> in a video of a couple of years ago. Oh yes, I think I did a uh, a now and then with G Love, his uh, newest album at the time, 
called the sauce. No, the juice. Hey, juice, sauce, they're both liquids, right? Anyway, uh, that was, you know, that was, the juice was the now album. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's that easy was the then album. So look for that video in case you're so inclined. And then his fourth album, Philadelphonic. Uh, he's from Philadelphia. And then his fifth album and the uh, one that I, the most recent one of his that I have, Electric Mile. And this this is actually a particularly good one. <clears> hmm. <throat> And then we have a, this, this is kind of a really cool package. It's uh, two CDs and a booklet, or, or two discs and a booklet. Uh, it is um, Gnarls Barkley, St. Elsewhere. And, and yeah, it does kind of show up on here. It's the a 3D lenticular cover. Very, very cool. And uh, yes, this was at the FYE up in Salem, and I think it was only like $7.99. And it's in, as you can see, it's in really good shape. I mean... The corners aren't even messed up. The discs, the discs were spotless, and so I decided, hey, what the heck? Not one of my favorite albums by any means, but hey, good enough to not pass up. It's got some great songs on it, and if you're not familiar with it, um, "Crazy" is their big, big hit song, and uh, "Gone Daddy Gone" is another really good one. And "Who Cares?" I kind of like that one as well. And the uh, DVD has. Uh, some of their music videos on it. So, very, very good stuff. Okay, moving on, and apologies if the framing of the shot is not precisely the way it was in the first half of the video. Uh, I had to reach my water back there and get a drink, so I had to push the table out of the way that my tablet is sitting on. So, anyway. Uh, up next here we have Leslie Gore, one of the great pop singers of the 60s. Yeah, I don't think she extended back into the 50s. I think she was just... The 60s, It's My Party is, of course, her big, big hit, as well as uh, You Don't Own Me is another great song, as well as Sunshine, Lollipops, and Rainbows. Such a depressing song. Anyway, I am being sarcastic. Uh, next one here. This is a great um, pop synth rock act from the 80s that uh, is kind of forgotten now. They don't get a whole lot of attention anymore. They're called Go West. And uh, one of their biggest hits, my favorite song of theirs, is called We Close Our Eyes. Great, great song. And uh, uh, The King of Wishful Thinking, that was another pretty big hit of theirs. As well as Call Me is another good one. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get perhaps their studio albums or maybe a more extensive hits collection. This is just one of those uh, cheap 10-track um, ten collections. But... Uh, <clears throat> it has suited me well for now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we have Andy Grammer. Uh, he's a yes, you know the a singer songwriter from the last ten years or so, and this is his debut album, I believe. Uh, just great stuff. Kind of reminds me of Jason Mraz, but uh, a little bit better than Jason Mraz, frankly. Uh, of course, I only have three of this guy's hits, and I think I only have. Jason Mraz's first, I have his first four albums, so I guess in in terms of how many albums I have, I, maybe Jason Mraz was a little bit better, I don't know. But anyway, yes, Andy Grammer, good stuff. Um, Lunatic is one of my favorite songs off this one, and uh, The Pocket was a, is pretty good, a pretty interesting one. That's one of the more Jason Mraz-ish songs on here. Keep Your Head Up is a good one. And then his sophomore album, Magazines or Novels. A very good one. And I think this was the Target exclusive edition, which was put out before uh, the A General Release Deluxe Edition, which for some reason, uh, if I remember correctly, does not include the two songs that were bonus tracks on the Target edition. I guess they I guess they had an exclusive arrangement with Target for those two songs. Who knows? But anyway, uh, Honey, I'm Good is the big uh, hit single off this one. That was really, really good. And uh, yeah, uh, Andy Grammer has a knack for the really... Uh, Catchy, tuneful songs. The, 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 the good earworms. He's got a knack for earworms. And his third album, The Good Parts. Uh, enjoyed this one. Not as much as his first two. And unfortunately, his uh, his most recent album, Naive, I just did not care for that one and ended up getting rid of it. <clears throat> so, you know, what can you do? And uh, this next artist, I've mentioned her before. She is one of my favorite um, female pop vocalists. Uh, of all time, really, uh, Amy Grant, and this is 
the 30th anniversary uh, deluxe edition of her landmark album, Heart in Motion, her secular breakthrough album. She is primarily known as a Christian music artist. But yes, so many good songs on this album. The, the entire track list, practically. Good For Me, Baby Baby, Every Heartbeat, That's What Love Is For, uh, I Will Remember You, and the second disc is absolutely packed with uh, remixes, b-sides, extended mixes, you name it. So this is worth picking up. Uh, even, even just the regular album is worth picking up. And then her follow-up album from that, House of Love, which has almost as many good uh, hit songs on here, The Lucky One and uh, House of Love, the title track. Uh, she, does a, she does a cover of Joni Mitchell's Big Yellow Taxi, which is great. And, uh, and so is the, uh, the Counting Crows and Vanessa Carlton version of that song. I don't know if I just love that song so much or if people just have a knack for doing good covers of that song. I don't know. And then, uh, oh, what was the other one? I thought there was another good song, a uh, popular single off this album but I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. And then the only other Amy Grant that I have is actually a compilation, which includes um, hits from those other two albums, as well as a handful of other songs as well. And uh, so yes, it's uh, a fair amount of this album is redundant, but enough of it isn't that I wanted to keep it. Uh, case in point, one of the songs that is uh, a new, new track on this album, uh, Come Be With Me, features Keb Mo. So, and funny thing, I actually picked up this album before I became a fan of Kep Mo, and something told me to keep this album, to hang on to it, and I was right. And, uh, yes, it's got a handful of songs that are not on these other, these other two albums that are, were hit singles. Um, oh, The Next Time I Fall with Peter Cetera. Maybe that's the other one that I thought was on this one that I, uh, that wasn't, but, uh, yeah. Very good stuff. And it's also got a second disc uh, with a few extra songs on it, too. So, yeah. <clears throat> then we have uh, another grant. Will you grant me the uh, permission to show you another grant? Oh, I kill me. Anyway, uh, Peter Grant. This, is guy, he's, this guy has a great voice. It's one of those uh, deep baritone voices, which when you look at the guy... You don't think that kind of a voice can come out of this guy, but it does. It's, he's got a great voice. And on this album, his debut album, uh, New Vintage is the name of it. And as the title of the album kind of suggests, he does cover versions of classic pop songs. Uh, We've Only Just Begun, the Bra uh, Burt Bacharach song. The Bacharach David song catalog is just ripe for, you know, covers covering by thousands of artists, uh, which, which seems to happen. And uh, let's see, The Windmills of Your Mind, Spooky, which is, um, yeah. Life's a little crazy with a spooky little girl like you. Something, that's kind of how it goes. You, you might recognize the song. Uh, he does a great rendition of that on here. And uh, yeah. I Saw Her Standing There, which which I believe is the, uh, the song that the Beatles made famous. And You're the First, the Last, My Everything. So, yeah, good stuff. And... Uh, so good, in fact, that I've got two more of his albums. Uh, this one is called Traditional. And this one has um, the song... Where Where is the song? Oh, Happy Together. I've never been really crazy about that song. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. But the version that this guy does, and I, I don't know if it's... Well, part of it is because of his voice. He's just got such a great voice. But it is my favorite version of that song. Uh, Happy Together was a song that was made famous by the Turtles. But yeah, great, great song. And uh, That's Life... Well, actually, no. Um, no, I think I think That's Life is an original. Maybe not. It's it's not the Frank Sinatra song. I, I know that much. So I, so I can't remember if it's a Peter Grant original or not. But anyway. Uh, Let the Good Times Roll. That's a classic blues song. He covers that one. Until You Come Back to Me. That's uh, one that... Uh, I think that was also a back rack song that... Uh, Dionne Warwick made famous. So yes, and uh, but this uh, album actually has more original tunes than New Vintage has. So uh, it's a, pretty much a 50-50 mix of originals and covers. So good stuff. And then he moves on to, I believe it's all original songs on his album, his self-titled album. And uh, this one was released on an indie label as opposed to his other two albums. 
But uh, yes, great stuff. And I cannot remember. I cannot remember what the really good songs on this one were. But uh, yes, this was put out in 2011. And I don't think he's put out another album since. At least if he has, I don't think it's been on physical media. So. <clears throat> but yes, uh, I, I'm. I've mentioned before how much I like uh, uh, unique sounding voices. Peter Grant fills that bill, definitely. And he's a great singer besides. Uh, next one we have is a band called A Great Big World. And I resisted these guys for quite a while, thinking that their stuff was just kind of really, really cheesy. And, in fact, I might have actually bought this album, like, maybe in the $1 or, or budget bin, and didn't like it at first and got rid of it and eventually came back to it. Uh, but, yeah, they have kind of a childish uh, charm to them, I guess. I guess that's a way to put it. Uh, these guys strike me kind of in the same way that um, AJR kind of strikes me. At least their stuff so far has. Kind of kind of immature, but not in a bad way, I guess. But, uh, but their songs have good messages, too. So it's not to say that, you know, they're just immature fluff songs. The songs have good messages. Uh, some of them do, anyway. And then their sophomore album... Uh, when the Morning Comes. I uh, found this one... No, that's right, yeah. I had picked this one up, didn't care for it, got rid of it, and then up in Portland, I think it was, I saw their sophomore album, decided to pick it up and uh, take it home, listen to it, and I liked it enough that I went ahead and uh, sought out their first album again and kind of became a fan of theirs. And, uh, yeah, good stuff, and I was a little disappointed to hear... <clears throat> at least that's uh, the last I heard that they put out or were putting out a third album, but it was not going to be on physical media. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong on that. And uh, then moving on to a a classic pop artist that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, Al Green. This is his greatest hits. This is actually a uh, um, reissued uh, del uh, version of his greatest hits with a few bonus tracks. Uh, five bonus tracks, actually. But, uh, yes, Let's Stay Together, of course, is his big hit song. Uh, Tired of Being Alone is another great song. And uh, Here I Am, Come and Take Me. Uh, I Can't Get Next to You. So, yes. Al Green is a classic artist for good reason. Classic soul artist. And then this one, actually, this one and the, other, the next one I'll show you were in my sister's collection. Uh, Everything's Okay. And I actually heard one of the songs off this one I heard on a sampler from a magazine that used to include a mix CD with every issue. And the mix CD was absolutely packed to capacity, like 20 songs on each mix CD. The magazine was called Paste. Uh, it it's, exists as an online, online uh, publication now. I don't think the, the magazine is in print anymore. But yeah, that's how I heard about... Um, oh, what's, which song was it? Be My Baby was the song that I heard off this one. And I just it just charmed me so much that I picked it up, picked up the album and... Uh, or no. No, the, the album was in my sister's collection. That's right. I think. I can't remember right now. So, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> but yes, the whole rest of the album is good. I mean, he's he still has his voice, you know, 25, 30 years after his classic soul hits. <coughs> And then uh, the next album of his that I have is Lay It Down. And this one features Anthony Hamilton, Corinne Bailey Ray, and John Legend as uh, collaborators. So uh, what's not to like about that one? So, yes. Sorry, my, my voice is starting to go, so hopefully I'll be able to finish this video up before I am completely speechless. Uh, this next one, you could classify this as a uh, not-so-guilty pleasure because... The songs, he's a good singer. It's just the songs have not aged well. This album was put out in 1989. Uh, it is uh, Scott Grimes. He is an actor. Uh, started out as a child actor. This album was put out uh, when he, well, when he was young, obviously. And uh, <clears throat> he's able, he's managed to uh, carry his acting career on into his adulthood. He is, I believe he's on um, The Orville, the Seth MacFarlane show. And, uh, but yeah. This is the good stuff. This album was produced by Richard Carpenter of The Carpenters. 
So some some uh, you know musical musical cred behind this album. But yes, he does a version of uh, "You've Got a Friend," a Carol King song, and uh, "You're the Voice," the song that was made famous by Heart, as well as uh, those might be the only covers. I'm not sure, but uh, hey, as I said, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, and I was delighted to find out uh, that many years later he put out another album. Uh, this one is called Living on the Run. And yes, this was put out in uh, 2005. And this one has a bit more of a of a Americana or country-ish vibe. So yes, and honestly, he's a darn good singer. And I, I kind of wish that he put out, you know, more albums between just these two. I, as far as I know, these are the only two albums of his uh, that exist. So uh, I guess I might have to go online and search. He's one artist that I have not searched uh, searched for for a long time, honestly, uh, if ever. And now this next one, you might recall that I had I used to have a bunch of this artist's albums, but. <coughs> They just, for some reason, they just kind of went went cold on me a lot faster than I thought they were going to. And so this is actually the only recording of his that I still have that is still standing. Josh Groban, uh, his uh, concert album, and it's actually a CD as well as a DVD. And one of the... Uh, this kind of uh, sheds light on how much Josh Groban has cooled on me. One of the big reasons I have this is because... John Williams is featured as uh, the conductor in with uh, the conductor of the orchestra that he sings uh, over. So the John Williams connection figured into my keeping this album. So that he's not a bad singer. It's just I, I've realized that the the popera, the pop opera crossover stuff is doesn't typically last long with me. There's one or two exceptions. Unfortunately, Josh Groban was not one of those. So, sad to say. And then moving on to one of the idol um, uh, contestants. This was the runner-up of the first season of American Idol. And some of you watching already know who this is. Justin Guarini. His self-titled debut album. Good stuff. And then uh, this CD set was from my sister's collection. Uh, she loved this band. And so, yes, this is a very treasured part, uh, one of my favorite um, keepsakes from my sister, the Guess Who. This is a three-disc ultimate collection from that great Canadian rock band. Uh, and yeah, what can I say? I mean, all three discs are basically packed. Lots and lots of songs on here. Pretty much every song that they are uh, that appeared on the singles chart, as well as a bunch of album cuts, uh, some live stuff on here, and probably a couple of remixes, alternate takes. Also on here, so good stuff. When I want to have, when I want to uh, conjure good memories of my sister, that's one of the albums that I put on. So yeah, good stuff. And here we have a kind of a kind of left field, a, a lesser known rock band. Uh, they're called Guster, and I found out about them because the a cappella band at the local university uh, would incorporate their songs, Guster songs, into their repertoire. So that's how I heard about these guys and picked up a couple albums and thought they were pretty darn good. They they have a bit of a folk rock um, uh, thing to them, so which makes them kind of unique, uh, I think. So and yeah, what you wish for is a great song, and uh, center of attention is one of my favorite songs of theirs. And then uh, what's uh, uh, barrel of a gun? That was a pretty good song off of this album, Lost and Gone Forever. Which this is, I think, their second or third album. Then I have their follow-up album from that, "Keep It Together," which uh, I kind of like the kind of like the cover of this album, honestly. And uh, let's see, uh, "Careful" is a great, great song on this one. Uh, the title track, "Keep It Together," is great, and "I Hope Tomorrow Is Like Today." That's a good one. And then uh, their subsequent album, I think, after that is Ganging Up on the Sun. Another very, very good album. Satellite and uh, One Man Wrecking Machine. Come On is another great song. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, if you're not familiar with Guster, check them out. If Especially if you are looking for something a little bit different. 
as I said, these guys have a bit of a folk sound uh, infused into their rock uh, tendencies. So yeah, good stuff. Then we have a one of the most recent uh, CDs additions to my collection. I got it very late last year, but uh, not late enough that I wasn't able to include it in my Albums of the Year countdown. It was in my top ten, as I recall. Mickey Guyton with her album Remember Her Name. This is great uh, country with just a little dash of R&B. Some great lyrics in these songs. Uh, great, great personal stories she tells in a lot of these songs. So I definitely recommend checking this album out if you have not yet. <clears throat> and then we have a trio of albums by a particular artist, Haim, uh, with their debut album, Days Are Gone. Uh, great album. And this is actually the Japanese version, which has, it has like five, yeah, five bonus tracks. Um, three of them are remixes, you know, uh, demo, one demo track and two remixes, uh, but also two non-album tracks of, uh, not on the American version of the album. And then, but that's the only I think that's the only Japanese version album of theirs, theirs that I have. This is their sophomore album, Something to Tell. Also very, very good. Um, uh, Once You Back is a great song. And what was the other one? Oh, Something to Tell You, the title track. And yeah, very good stuff. I feel I should be more of a fan of theirs than I am. And I don't know why I'm not for some reason. But it's been a long time since I've listened to any of their albums so I need to re-listen to them. And this one was from 2020, I believe. My glasses are failing me a little bit. Uh, this is Women in Music Part 3, another very, very good album. <coughs> and coming down to the last, oh, dozen or so CDs, so I think my voice will last, and the video shouldn't be too terribly long. Here we have a bargain bag CD from last year, uh, the Hal Lovejoy Circus. Good stuff on this one. Hot Pants was the name of the, one of the songs, as you recall. And now we're coming to one of my favorite uh, artists from the 80s. And I used to have just their uh, two-disc Greatest Hits collection, and I eventually finally decided to delve into their studio albums, so I picked up a handful of them. Daryl Hall and John Oates. Uh, Voices is the first album of theirs uh, that I have. And this actually is a... Japanese version, kind of a expanded obi strip, and yes, I bought this. Um, it was only like six ninety nine or seven ninety nine when I bought it from Amazon, and so and I had no idea it was the Japanese version. So that's like you can barely get a Japanese CD for less than twenty five dollars. So this was like a total steal. And then I have their subsequent album, Private Eyes, as well as H two O. Great stuff. And yes, those are probably their three most hit-packed albums. And I actually picked this one up. This, I guess, is a uh, <clears throat> a new acquisition, but it, hap it happens to fall in the uh, block of CDs that I am showing you. So, so it's a new acquisition, but it's in the lineup here. Their uh, greatest hits album, Rock, uh, Rock and Soul Part 1. And I decided to pick this one up because it has just enough... Um, uh, hit singles from the studio albums that I don't have, as well as a couple of songs that were um, released exclu exclusively with this album that became pretty darn good singles, uh, pretty popular singles in their own right, uh, which I believe are um, Say It Isn't So was uh, exclusive to this album. And this actually is the uh, reissue, remastered one that includes two additional tracks. Uh, they're a cover of You've Lost That Love and Feeling, as well as the song Family Man. So, yeah. So I have this in lieu of having the studio albums that the songs not exclusive to this are on. So, but those, that's not the end of my Hollow Notes albums. I also have Big Damn Boom, which has uh, Out of Touch and Method of Modern Love on it. And yes, each of these albums, I probably should have shown you these to you. These are remasters, and each of them, I believe, has. Um, additional bonus tracks on it. This one has a couple of remixes. And uh, let me dial backwards, backtrack here a little bit, and you can see. I guess this one has a couple of uh, extended uh, mixes on it. <clears throat> As does Private Eyes. 
Yes, I Can't Go For That uh, is one of my favorite songs of theirs. And uh, Did It In A Minute is another one of my favorite songs, which is not one of their... I, I think it was issued as a single, but I think it was one of their lesser charting singles. Uh, but anyway, finally, the last Hollow Notes album that I have is Ooh Yeah! And this one has a couple of their uh, popular singles. Everything, Everything Your Heart Desires and Missed Opportunity are on here. And uh, so, yeah, an excellent band and uh, one of my, probably not really my holy trinity, my, my holy trinity of 80s is Men at Work, Huey Lewis in the News, and Duran Duran. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, so if I were to, you know, in retrospect, these guys are basically the fourth in that, uh, in that uh, holy hall of fame, my personal 80s hall of fame. Now this next artist, yes, I gotta finish up because my voice is really starting to throat's starting to get scratchy. Uh, Julia Haltigan and the Hooligans. This was in a bargain bag uh, last year. Good stuff, and and the name of the band is great. And then <clears throat> coming up on, actually, except for the very last CD I'll be showing you, uh, this one artist covers all the rest of these, and this is an artist that about once every five to ten years, I happen to discover an artist and I just absolutely get obsessed with that artist. And it seems to happen, some more often than not anyway, it seems to happen when I'm really losing losing faith in music and thinking that I'm not going to come up with uh, or come across anything that's going to rejuvenate my interest in music. And then this artist happens to do that at just the right time. And this one I'm talking about, and I've talked about him before on my channel, he is not one that you have not heard of from me, Wouter Hamill. And this is his debut album, Hamill. And yes, this is in a purple-tinted jewel case. But uh, yes, this guy is just so amazing. And I've talked about him before. Uh, this is a an EP live at home. Uh, it has only has about five or six songs on it. <coughs> but they're so good. And oh, actually, I think most of these are Japanese. The original Hamel was a Japanese import. Actually, I think the Live at Home is Japanese as well. And then his uh, second full-length album, uh, Nobody's Tune. Very good. And uh, since it's in a digipack, I had to put the Obi strip in there in the booklet. So. And then, uh, this one is actually not a Japanese import. I don't know if they even made... Oh, actually, yes, they did make a Japanese import, but it, it's very expensive and very, and very hard to find. And actually, also, I don't think it has any bonus tracks on it anyway. But, uh, yes, his third full-length album, Lohengrin, the only one that was issued in the States, uh, interestingly enough. And then my favorite album of his, the one that... Uh, Actually, no, I discovered him just before he put this album out, <clears throat> but this album just cemented my fandom of him, for him. One of my favorite albums of all time, Pompadour. I love, I love pretty much every single song on this album. And yes, this is also a Japanese version. And then another EP, Girls in the City. And this one... Uh, Yes, Girls in the City is actually a, a Japanese bonus track on Pompadour, but this also has a couple of other songs um, exclusive to it. And then his let's see, one, two, three, four, fifth album, Omri, another great one. Uh, hey Now is a great, great song. And then his most recent album, Boys Town. Uh, not quite the fan of this one that I... Uh, that I am of his previous albums, and yes, it is. Yep, yeah. another Japanese, and and uh, yes, uh, Omri is also a Japanese. Or if I can get the, if I can get this darn Opie strip back in here, so it'll sit in there properly. Omri is uh, 
I have to show you proof that I've got Japanese CDs. You don't care, do you? Anyway, so yes, that is my complete and continuing uh, Voucher Hamill collection. I love the guy. Uh, I could, I, I could, and I have made a uh, greatest hits collection of his that uh, pretty much fills to capacity a disc. So, yes, a great, great artist. And finally, the last CD I will be showing you in today's block of my Hold On CD collection is Possibilities by Herbie Hancock. And this is a great album he features. He kind of does the modern-day Santana thing where he has a whole bunch of guest artists uh, on the album, and he just he's just kind of the the producer or the ringleader and brings the whole thing together. But yes, uh, he's got John Mayer, uh, Santana, uh, Angelique Kijo, Christina Aguilera, Paul Simon, Annie Lennox, Sting, Johnny Lang, Joss Stone, uh, Raul Midon, and Trey Anastasio from Fish. They are all on here, and they all do great songs. Some of them are covers, some of them are original songs. Uh, and I also have a DVD that talks about the making of this album, which makes it even more interesting. So yes, a fantastic album. And not the only Herbie Hancock album I have, uh, by the way. But it is the only one I will be showing you in today's video, because not only is the video getting long, but I have reached the end of this block of 90 CDs in my Hold Arn CD collection. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, watch my past videos. Every volume of my whole CD collection is in a, is in a playlist that you can find on my YouTube, YouTube channel's homepage, so you can watch it from the beginning and use up literally hours and hours of your time watching me show you all my CDs. And there's hours to come as well. So anyway, yes, uh, I appreciate you guys watching me. Check out my fellow YouTube friends who are down in the description. We've got some great channels hiding out there. Uh, yes, the YouTube universe is full of music YouTuber channels, but uh, there are some probably that you haven't discovered yet. But anyway, yes, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.